Moving to the next phase with the mezzanine too. Do me a favor, real quick, put your hands to the back, say hey. All right, stretch your hands over this way, hey. That was a faith move right there. That was a faith move. I want you to know that. That was a faith move. You wave at all the people that are sitting all over there. They're all over there. Amen. And they might be your cousins. They might be your, they might be your co-worker. It might be your nephew. It might be that one boss. See, some of y'all didn't want to go there. As soon as I got the boss, I was like, mm, 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 mm. Nah, I don't know about that, Pastor. I don't know. I don't know. But it might be. Yeah, if they get there and say, hey, guess what? They might come back to the job and love on you even more. Yeah. God may use them in a major way. Same about somebody say amen. amen. We've been in this series and we just started. And we've been talking about this series, and the name of the series is simply this: uh, Is the Holy Spirit in your contacts? Is the Holy Spirit in your contacts? Is the Holy Spirit in your contacts? And are you in touch with the Holy Ghost? Are you in touch with the Holy Ghost? We talk about when it comes to the idea of walking out of this Christian life and the power of purity and purpose is impossible to fulfill it without the reliance and the trust on the Holy Spirit. We talk about the idea about how that walk looks like and how it operates in the idea of our life and how to move it in and walk in it in the ideal of being Christians. We talk about when it comes to the idea of the relationship with the Holy Spirit, the example we used was the analogy of how it works in the ideal of the life and we used the metaphor, if you will, the ideal of connecting, say contact. We talked about the idea and the metaphor that we were using that that contact will remind you and show you who you're in relationship with, show you who you're in fellowship with, show you who you're in friendship with. We can look at your contacts and really tell who you've been talking to. Yeah. Or we can tell who you ain't been talking to, yeah. who you're not in fellowship with, who you're not in friendship with. Yeah. We found out even if we look at that idea of your phone and your contact the same way that in Jesus says in John 14 that as he was about to leave off the scene and as he's about to go back to the Father, before he leaves, he says, Listen here, I'm going to send you a helper, the comforter. He's going to be with you even though I'm going to leave. So what he does is leave them with the contact of the Holy Spirit so that they would be in relationship and fellowship and be in connection still. Even after he left, they have a contact and a relationship with heaven by itself. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell you my neighbor. Amen. Can you touch God? Can you touch God? Can you use the keypad that's in that part of that contact that is there a place in which that God can touch you and you've been touching God? I know you know how to get to everybody else, but can God get to you? And can you get to God? Then we also said, even on that contact piece, it talks about a little piece on there, Judy, it says recent. Yeah, when's the last time you spoke with the Holy Spirit? Better yet, when's the last time the Holy Spirit spoke to you? And in the last in the midst of the call, was it accepted or was it declined? Was you so busy doing, that's all right, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. You, you might have been busy. I ain't gonna ask you what you was doing. Let's just do it that way. You might have been so busy doing what I was doing that even though that still small voice came in your ear, that even though that little impression on your heart, even though that little pull in your stomach, that little something, you say, nah, I ain't gonna do that this time. I ain't gonna do that because I know it's gonna stop me or convict me and convince me of where I'm going. It's not what he wants. And right this moment, I want to be God on the throne tonight. Yeah. Or, 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 could the Holy Spirit be in our favors? If we open up your phone right now, would I find the ideal that you called him late? And now, see, see, my favorites, at the top of the list of my favorites, to be honest with you, is Pastor Burn. You know why? She's my favorite. The same really do. She's my favorite. If anybody else that wants to talk on the earth, I want to talk to Pastor Burn the most. So when you open up my phone, you're going to see contact with Bernadette. Contact with Bernadette. What's even more dangerous is that because she's in my phone and she's on my plan, when I call her, it says David Mills. I don't know if you understand, but the two shall become. So, so now what happens now, when I call her, I'm reminded of how much she loves me. So, so even in that idea of those favorites, it reminds everybody, if anybody looks at it, they'll know automatically who I'm talking to the most, who I'm hanging out with the most, who I spend time with the most, where I'm going the most, because that person is a part of my what? Contacts. So last week we talked about the idea of the power of the idea of him being a person. Say a person. A person. Say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. It's not. It's not. An it. it. Talked about that last week. You wouldn't like nobody call you an it. So if you went in your house and your child said, it came home. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. We could be hearing your child scream even till tomorrow. All right? Can we talk about it's not something. The idea of something moved me. No, 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 no. Because if you walked inside, somebody came in your house and you went to the refrigerator, they said something. Is that the refrigerator? 
you would have an attitude. You got one now. We didn't even talk about you. You know what I'm saying? So, so the idea is, is not to be so the idea to have this attitude and this so 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 this coldness about our relationship with the Holy Spirit. But he is a person, say a person, who has a mind, who has a will, who has a being. He is the third person of the Trinity. He is the paraclete, he is the helper, he is the comforter, he is our strength, he is our purpose, he is the earnest of the ideal of who God is. The word earnest means a down payment of one coming back to be in a hangout and marriage with you. Literally, and he is like the ideal of an engagement ring to Jesus himself. Amen. That I'm going to leave this and leave him with you so that you will know that I'm coming back to you, that I will marry you eventually in heaven. Come on. Amen. All those are, are patterns of who he is. Say a pattern of who he is. So as we talked about the ideal of one, number one, talk about the ideal of him and being a person. But today we got to talk about the second level, and that's for your name and neighbor. Amen. Let's talk about the power. Let's talk about the power. Yes, sir. Now, now last week we gave you the, per the, the, the preeminent part, and that's this, that you can't have power without meeting the person first. Right, right. Delmarva don't work that way. Pico don't work that way. I know some of y'all hijacked some power, but I'm talking about the real purpose that, you know what I mean, that didn't get it hijacked. That's fine. You, you had to meet a person that represented them first, and then they helped release the power to your life. So what God does in the ideal representation, he sends Jesus to us and then Jesus releases the Holy Spirit in our life as we accept him in his name. Say in his name. Amen. That's why he says in John 14, he says the Holy Spirit will come in my name. So once I accept Jesus Christ and his name, I receive the power also of the Holy Spirit in my life. Say amen. amen. So when we get to that point, the ideal of this, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say neighbor. neighbor. We're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. How much power you got? I think that when you when we look at your phone, some of the things that we look at is is who's calling all that. But one of the most scariest things to look at is the level of power. I mean, if, you know, there's some people that drive a little crazy when you get within 10 percent. Matter of fact, some people won't talk to you if you get the five. Matter of fact, some people go into exact shock when you get the two. And all of a sudden, they take off running. They was holding a conversation with you. They were, what's the matter? Almost out of power. And what they were doing was letting you know that right now, I'm at a loss of something that I believe I need for my life. And if I don't have the power that I need, I won't be able to function the way I'm supposed to function. I won't operate the way I'm supposed to operate. I lose the ability to connect, to relate, to me to have relationship, to have fellowship, and all those things in my life. So I'm going to take off in this moment because what I need is power. And I don't know if I'm going to have it or not. I know you came to church, but did you bring a charger with you? Did you come to get charged or did you bring it with you? When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he becomes our charger. He becomes the one that's in our life to empower, to instruct, to give us an empowerment to be able to do what we couldn't do by ourselves. And one of the great things that we can do is that I think that Jesus does for us. He says he's an end sample like us. So he literally says he's the firstborn among many brethren. And one of the things that patterns that we wanted to look at was how Jesus functions in the ideal of how he walks his life out. Because he tells us that, listen, you are, you are made to be the image and the likeness of God. That the way Jesus walked out his life is the way we got to walk out ours. And if, if Jesus needs the Holy Spirit, what, what I said was if Jesus needs the Holy Spirit, then I believe we need the Holy Spirit too. If you believe that, somebody say amen. amen. So, so as, we, as, we, as we dive into the word real quick and look at some of the things that, that was laid out and given to us, I, I want to share a couple things with you real briefly. And that's this, the Holy Spirit is your enabler and your resident power source. The Holy Spirit is, he is, say he is, yes. my enabler and my resident power source. My resident power. It's, not, it's not the Holy Spirit and power, it's the Holy Spirit is my power. Yes. He is my power. Matter of fact, I, I wonder how much power you've got. Which, which one would you look like right now? Would, would you be the one on the left or would you be? Okay, depending upon where you sit. Would you be on the right or the one on the left? How much power did you really show up with today? What level would you really be at today? How much power do you really got? It's not an issue of you giving power. You have it, but how much are you functioning in, operating in, flowing in, walking in, and living in? Tell your neighbor, how much power you got? Bible reminds us and is completely ideal of how it lays out some things for our life because if you don't have the power, you know what it like you know, on the phone. Oh, say on the phone, say on the phone. On the phone. Not, not, not personally, but on the phone. I found out if you don't have uh, power on the phone, you can't have any uploads or downloads. 
That's Matter of fact, you can't hear if somebody calls. Right. Matter of fact, you don't have no mail. You can't handle any text of scripture. I mean, text of, of text. If you don't have any power. So what has to happen is, I gotta be connected to be able to have the power that I need for my life. Somebody say amen. amen. So, so as we look at the idea of what that means and how it functions and how it works for our life, I want to look at it from scripture. Let's look at it from, from scripture. Let's lead us out first. First is this. If, if you say, say, how much power you got? How much power you got? It's an issue of activation. Say activation. Activation. Activation because it means the power of the, our person first. Say the power of your person first. The power of your person first. So, so, so what it means is, is simply this, is that if there is no power in your person, there won't be no power in your life. Yeah. If you have no power to your person, before you do anything, can there be power to be? Are you hearing me? What we sometimes want is, God, give me power to do. God is like, I, I already gave you power to do. But what I'm really interested in is, do you have power to be? Yeah. And the power to be helps us in the idea of activation this way. Because he says this way, he says, And the child grew and waxed strong, and the spirit was filled with wisdom, and the grace was upon him. What that simply means is this, is that just like us, when we get saved, we then are born again. Say born again. Born again. Okay, here's the principle. That Jesus himself, watch this, he came here, but the way he came here was he the Bible says it overshadowed. He would say he was already living. Already. But he had to be born. Which means he was living, but he had to be born to live again. That's why me and you have to be born and then be born again. So then when he's born again, he takes on the idea of that power when he's birthed in that he has spirit in him already. Say so it's already in him. It's already in him. So but then what happens is as he's growing, so as he's growing, the Bible says he waxes strong where? In the spirit. So it's a lot of people that come to church, but that doesn't mean that you wax strong in the spirit. And that you, the idea of the evidence of, of real power is this. Real power, say real power, real power. is rarely seen, rarely. but it is demonstrated. Rarely. If I said to you, how do you know your car has power? You don't see power, you see the results. Ah, you, you, don't, you, don't see, you don't see your cars, you've never seen your car's power. You just saw the effects of it. You saw the movement of it. You saw the changing of it from one place to another place. So maybe real power is supposed to have some effects in my life. It's to cause some results in my life. So it's to cause me to move from one place to another place. And if I don't do that, what well, is the question if I really got power? If I say to you, how do you know the lights work? The lights don't have power of their own. They get power from another source. And you've never seen the power, but you see the effect. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. This is why what's incredible to me is what Jesus does is he wants us to look at each other's life and be able to see not the fact that you just got the Holy Spirit. What is the effect of the Holy Ghost inside your life? What is the difference of the Holy Spirit in your life? What is the result of the Holy Spirit in my life? Yeah. Say, so I'm hearing this. I'm hearing this. So Jesus is just demonstrating that because he has the Spirit, he can't stay the same. Come on. He waxes strong. He can't even stay the same because he has the Holy Spirit in his life. Yeah. When I have and you have the Holy Spirit in my life, we can't stay the same. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, yeah. where you would have fell, fell apart, you can't now. Yeah. Where you would have walked away, you can't now. Where you would have ran away, you can't now. There is some strength that you didn't have before that now there's power available to you. And by the way, by the way, let me help you with this. Here's how our power works in the idea of our relationship. Because real power works this way. He says real power works like this. He says the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a body shaped like a dove. And upon him and the voice came over him from heaven. Thou art my son. This is my beloved one in whom I'm really pleased. Yeah. Say this neighbor. neighbor. What he's going to do is have it in you. But then what he's going to do is explain it to you and empower you so that other folks see the power of God in your life for you. So much so over in scripture it says not just the dove, but lightning shows up. Say power. And this means a shift of something, the results of something, and a change of something. So in other words, what he's saying is this. Now what happens is through the power of God, like Jesus did, he submits himself. Say submit himself. And it's carried over to the idea of what you do with your life. I want you to notice this. The power of the Holy Spirit don't fall on his life while he's 29. Wow. Then fall on him while he's 25. It didn't fall on him while he was even 20. It fell on him when he submitted his life to somebody else. Amen. Because power has to follow order. Yeah. Power has to follow structure. Yeah. 
You see, if I was about to hook up your house, we have to make sure everything is actually hooked up so that when the power shows up, there won't be a confusion, there won't be an explosion of something because the power has somewhere to go. It, it reads like this in scripture. The anointing runs down the head, on the beard, on the skirt. So if I'm in order, I qualify for power to my life. It's why he has to find John before heaven opens over him. We got a lot of people trying to open heaven, but ain't in submission to nobody. Shout power, shout power. I want to give you this clarity because in scripture there's normally two words for power. Say egusia. Say, say dudes. Now, they're really big words, but I'm going to tell you what they practically mean. They mean this, that to every Christian, God gave you both of them. Say both of them. The Bible says he gave you both of them, Mike, both of them. I have a hoosie. It means authority. Say authority. Say authority. Say if you say it, God's giving you power. God's giving you power. And the Bible says it in John chapter 1, verse 12. As many as received me, I give you power to become the sons of God. Yes. Say, I have authority. I have authority. Okay, don't trip. Don't trip. I'm, looking like Jesus. I'm looking like Jesus. And I got authority to do it. Not only does he say you have authority, but he also says you have the most, which means the capacity, the ability, and, and the capability to produce miraculous work and power in your own life. So you don't have one of them, you actually have both of them. Say, I got both of them. See, I'm going somewhere. See, he's going somewhere. So look what he says. When this happens, John 14 says this way, but the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, in whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring you into remembrance of whatsoever you say. Then he also says over in John 20, I'm going to get to that. So let's say, neighbor, this is how it comes. In order to have power, you got to have authority. So, so when Delmarva sends you power, yes. they send it in their name. Yes. But they gotta have somewhere to send it so they use yours. And if you're, watch this, and if they can recognize your name, they can lose the power. Okay, so, so, so hear me. When Jesus says, you will receive the Holy Spirit in my name, you already have the authority. Yes. Yeah. And he has already released the power. Wow. So now he's already given you what you might not even think you had. Yeah. But it's been given in his name. Wow. Say his name. Yes. Now that might not mean much to you as an adult, but for the children in the house, what it means is something incredible. Mm -hmm. Is that I get the benefit from all the power of the house and not pay a bill because it's in somebody else's name. Yeah. And so I don't have to worry what's in my pockets because it's really about somebody else's name. I don't worry about how my strength because it's really about somebody else's name. So when the bill comes to the house, it don't come from Chris, it don't come from Des, it comes to David Mills because it's in my name. So my children don't have to struggle about power in their life because it's in my name. So if you're a child of God, you really should be able to handle having power because it's in your father's Say, excuse me. Excuse me. I got power. Don't play. Power. Don't, don't play. Don't play. Don't play. Mr. Ryan, can I borrow that for a second? Because what's important is the disciples even had to learn this. Because first you get the authority of his presence, then you get the power of his presence in your life. And what I mean by that is this. Hold it for one second. Because what he does with the disciples is what he does with everybody else's life. Many times what we think is Acts chapter 1 is when the Holy Spirit shows up. But it's not. The Bible says in John chapter 20, the disciples saw him raise up from the dead. He came up with all authority. Say power. Power. He got up with all power. Went and found the brothers. Says in John chapter 20, he says, look here brothers. Before y'all do anything, you're going to need salvation for your life. And then I'm going to empower you later on. I'm going to give you the authority. But over in Acts, you're going to get the, watch this, power. Here it is. I'm not saying it's scripture. He says in John chapter 20, 20, 22, he says, and then Jesus said to them, again, peace I say unto you, and as the Father has sent me, why? Because he sent me in his name. Even so, I send you. Why? Because I'm giving this in my name. And then he says, and then when he said unto them, he breathed unto them, and they received what? Say they already had the authority. Now, in Acts, when it shows up, the application of the power hits. Come on. So you got to sing your name in the Pico, but then they agree with the contract, and then they release the power. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what God did for us was, in Jesus' name, yeah. say in Jesus' name. In Jesus. That's why you ain't got to trip about how you feel because it ain't based on your name. It ain't based on your strength. It ain't based on your economy. It ain't based on my family. It ain't based on my ability. It ain't based on anything I got. I receive this in Jesus' name. And based on his name, before God, he has released power to my life. Amen. Tell you, man, by the way, by the way. It, it, it's the first stage. It's the first stage. And sometimes our problem is, you know what it is? We ain't took it out of the box. You, you got it, but it's trapped by some, 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 some easy stuff. We boxed it by our old beliefs that, that God don't want to use. We, we boxed it by the offenses that we have because we came to other churches. And you know, I've never seen it work for somebody else, so I don't believe it will work for me. And we boxed it by the ex of the ideal that I keep using excuses that I don't want it that much power because it might make my life really have to change. Because wow. if I get the power, then something has to have some results. Then I'm going to have to have some effects. Then I'm going to have to have some difference. Then something's going to have to happen. Because you can't put something up. And if it don't work, that means it, not, it wasn't this power source. It was the resource that it hit that was out of whack. You ever plugged up something that don't work? The source was working, but the resource didn't. So sometimes it's not nothing to do with God. Maybe it got something to do with us. You know what I found out too was the first thing you're gonna get is something called a portable charge. Now I'm use illustrations. I like illustrations. They're really powerful to me. They just kind of help me do this thing. Because see, I can take this wherever I go. Like the Holy Spirit. Come on, come on. And it's carrying power with it. Matter of fact, I found out not too long ago, I can have this and nobody will know I have it. That's right. Come on. Yeah. In fact, you might not see the power I'm carrying, but I got it. That's right. You, you, you might not even be able to discern it on me, but it's in me. You, you might not be able to have a conscious effect of it from the flesh, but I know what I have inside myself. I have a connection you can't see. I have a communication you can't see. I have a way of empowering and being built up that you can't even figure out. You trying to look at my flesh, it has nothing to do with my flesh. Yeah. It's nothing to do with my spirit. Yeah. It's excuse me. I got power. I'm telling you, I got power. I'm gonna play with you now. I'm gonna help you. Say, say, name. He's about to help you tap into it. He's about to help you tap into it. Say, 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 say give me some room. Give me some room. Give me, give me some room. I might need a little room here. I might need a room. Go to the next one for me because I want to help you understand. open this up. The Bible says now, he says, now after they received an the authority of it in John, he says, now they actually lose it for the idea of activation for the power. He says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be. Say, be. I want to slow down real quick because sometimes we're so familiar with scripture, we think that it may them run out and do something. The Bible says, be, be powerful, and it'll be a witness. Oh, wow. Ooh, no, he didn't. Scripture says, you shall be. He didn't say go witness there. He says, be. Take your wonderful self somewhere where nobody got power and come in with the power you have. Amen. Go where people are weak and the ideal of being a woman that thinks she need a man and be a woman that don't need one. Be, be a man that ain't got to chase every woman around you because you got power that can hold you. And now you demonstrate to me you got results and you got effects and you got a difference that's inside you. You got a charger that gives you power that nobody can see in the culture. Jesus. How you gonna how you gonna grow up with no parent, no father, and not be around marriage and have one for 27 years? Y'all yeah. ain't see my charger. <laughs> you, you ain't see my power. You didn't realize I can tap into some power that I didn't come with that don't show up nowhere else. I know I may look like I'm just human, but the truth of the matter is I have authority from heaven to be something else, and I have to watch this to do the most, the ability and the capacity and the capacity to be what you can't think I could be. Child, I got power. I got power. I got power. Now, 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 here's how it works. He says in Jude, in Jude chapter 1, verse 20, he says this, he says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Say, say, press it. I dare you to press the power in your life. I dare you. I know you got it, but you ain't pressing it. I know you probably can't see this, but I found out this little thing that helps me a lot. Huh? I found out that I can have it, but it ain't doing nothing if I don't press it. That's right. <laughs> so you mean you can carry power and it not be effective for your life? You mean you could walk with it and not do nothing for your life? You mean you could be in contact with it and then not change anything with you? Yeah, because I haven't pressed it. Say press. Press. Press it with your prayer life. Your prayer life. This is what he says, not me. Jude says, beloved, beloved, build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying where? In the Holy Ghost. Excuse me. This is what my charger sounds like. 
Nobody has to be around. But when I hit my charger, shut up about a controllable. I'm going from 25 to about 30. Shut up, baby. Keep top top I know. I just went from 30 to 40. That tongue all about. I'm about to hit 50. I carry my own. I don't need your charger. I got my own charger. So if you don't know me, your charger, don't break me your charger. Don't share your charger. I ain't tripping on you. I'm a believer that got my own charger. I will go in the Holy Ghost and download power. Say, press it. Press, press it. it. The other one over here is down here. He says, watch this. He says, you got to be able to press it. Say, press it. Press he it. says, watch this. Ephesians chapter 5. Write these down. He says, be not drunk with wine, where it is excess. He says, but, but, what I want you to be able to do is be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Say, say, are you ready? ready. I want you to press it. So go in the prayer and go in there in a way, and then go in there in such a way that your relationships push you into a place of, watch this, edifying yourself. Say edify. edify. Relate through edification. It's not just about emotions. It's edification. That when you get in the prayer, and some of you, and listen, if you don't turn on some music during the week, you know you don't have the same strength you used to have. Yeah. You don't even shift. You could shift your whole day. If you got them, just turn worship music on. And then you should start singing with the Lord. And just honoring God. Blessing you with the Spirit. Because the Bible says, watch this, he tells them what to do. He says, don't be drunk. He says, well, wherever is excess, be filled. Then he tells me how to be filled. Start speaking to yourself the songs. Yeah. Start declaring the sounds over your own life. Begin to power yourself up. Don't leave the house without pressing that word. Getting into worship. Getting in that thing by yourself. So you want to have power all day? Press into God yourself. Yeah. You got to press in. Say press in. Press in. And it's not, because the reason he's saying you got to press because you're not going to feel like it. There's going to be days you don't want to get up. You don't want to get into worship. But I don't care. If the water hits you in the shower, just open your mouth and sing while the water hit you. But bless God at all times and magnify him, give him glory, give him honor, give him praise, exalt him in the heart of your name. I'm magnifying you for who you are. I'm asking, I'm losing power right now. Yeah. He says, he says, speaking to yourself, songs and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody. Tell you, by the way, don't worry about what other people hear. Your song and your worship is the power yourself up. It ain't even about nobody else. I don't even care if you hear me. You go, he can't sing. That's all right. The Lord loves my sound. The Lord loves my sound. He is, he, 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 listen, he loves our sound so much. He'll move in our sound. That's why an accent says it came like a sound of a rushing mountain wind. He ain't scared of your song. He wants your sound. He wants to know that you will open yourself up, plug yourself in, download your own power, upload his mind, get a revelation of wisdom and empowerment for your own life. You are not subject to your flesh if you can power your own you got power. Say so you got more than that. Can you give him a praise for the power you really got? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you press your own button for one second? Come on, press praise him. Praise him. Since Paul says, fill yourself up. Songs and hymns. Go into worship every now and then. Go ahead and bless him every now and then. Go ahead and say thank you, Jesus, anyhow. And be able to go in the spirit. Go ahead and build yourself up. And keep, it don't matter if I'm making the church. It ain't it don't matter how you make the boxer. If I can still build myself up where I am, wherever I am, because I can't be in church all the time, so I gotta have enough power, and I gotta be able to press in wherever I am. If I'm on the job, excuse me, gotta go to the bathroom. I'm gonna go press in. No matter what, I'm gonna cry, I'm crying. I'm gonna press in. I don't care if you look at me in the light. I know why you look at me in the light, but I'm gonna bless the Lord at all times. His prayer is gonna be in my mouth. I will magnify the Lord, and I will give him glory, and I'll give him honor. phone up, it makes a sound. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's trying to tell us a story. Yeah. If you would just keep making the sound, yeah. you could get the power. Yeah. 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 At least your life. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? That's the power saying, we here. Yeah. We here, you connected, you tapped in, bam. Yeah. You, bam, you packed in, bam. You hook up to, bam, you're right here. And I'll meet you right in your worship. Yeah. Somebody give the Lord a good praise right there. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Thank you very much. Say, neighbor, yeah. you better take your portable power self somewhere. Yeah. Stop the 
people the power at home. Stop using the power at your job. Stop using the power just for certain people. Come on, bring the power yourself. Tap into who the Holy Spirit is. Lord, I need you right now. Lord, give me what I need right now. Help me with where I am. Help me now who you are and what you want to do in my life. My Bible tells me this in Luke 11. He says, if you being evil know how to ask it, give, give good gifts to your children, how much more your fathers could give it to them that ask? Say request it. If you press and request, in over in Luke, he says in 11, you request it, I'll give it. Amen. Shout more power. More power. Oh, five of y'all scared. Five of y'all scared. You know what you're scared of? You're scared that I might actually have it. Because if I get it, it's going to change something. It might change my life. And sometimes we're so happy with the box we've been in, we don't even want the power to show up. Because I don't even want to go to the new place that God wants to go to. I don't even want to fill me with something new. That means I'm going to leave something old. And sometimes we're so hooked up on the old thing, I don't even want the new thing. So I don't even know if I want the power to do something different. Because it's going to demand another result. So the stuff I used to say yes to, it's now going to give me power to say no, which means I'm going to have to get a whole bunch of new friends. Say amen anyhow. Yeah. Look what he says. So much Jesus now. Jesus, Jesus, all right. Let's say Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Look what he says. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Say being full. Being full. See, see, here's the thing. He already had him in him, but now he's full. Say full. full. And you can tell when something's full. When something's full, the inside controls the outside. Yeah. Wow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just for me and you, Mike, because we eat like we know how we eat. You know how we eat, right? You know what I mean? You won't eat no Twinkie and it's going to be cool. And you going to do it. So we're going to eat a whole meal and then what's in us is going to control us. Yeah. Don't act like you ain't ever went to see me. Stop looking at me like that. What's in you begin to control you and dominate your presence, your actions, your functions, what you did, what you didn't do. What was in you begin to control you. So if food can do that by itself, how come the Holy Spirit can fill you up to the point at which it begins to control you from the inside out? Shut up, fool. Full. What he does, he says, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Not only is he in him, but he now he says, I have application. Say application. Okay. It means I know how to work this thing. Yeah. That's where we get our short word apps from. You got apps, you got apps, you got apps. You, do you have application to be a man? Do you have the application to be a woman? Do you have the application to be a husband? Do you have the application to be a wife? Do you have the power in which you connect it enough to produce it that if anybody touch you, you can open up the program behind it and open up the system that you can walk in and operate in and flow in because you're tied to a kingdom and you're powered by the Spirit. Right. See, when you touch an app, it really just opens up the program that was on it. Okay. And my Bible says the kingdom of heaven is within you. Yeah. So you don't touch it. Don't touch you don't want to see the kingdom. You don't want to see the kingdom. Boom! Right. Open up. That's what a husband look like. The dog, dog, right. Boom! Don't touch me. Bam! What's that? That's what a father look like. You better not touch me because you're going to come in contact with what I'm carrying. I got a sister from the kingdom of heaven. That's what tell you, that's what should come out. If you fool. Now, if you ain't full of kingdom, praise God, we'll move forward. All right, we'll move forward. We'll move forward. He'll even the of the spirit. He says in Luke 4 and 14, Jesus return. Say return. In the power. Say in the power. I wish you to notice that Jesus is strong with the Holy Ghost the whole time that he's on the planet. And if he's strong with the Holy Spirit in him, on him, and over him, we might want to consider to be just the Holy Spirit with all of our life to be to have both activation but also to have application. Somebody say amen. Amen. And look what he says. He says, he returned the power of that, of that. Then the fame went out of running. See, that's Wi-Fi. That's Wi-Fi. Everybody had heard about power from him. Uh, Anybody heard from the power that you got? Uh, Is there any signal going out from the believer that you are? Single you sending out. You know what I'm saying? Jesus was walking in so much power, Mike. Wi-Fi was breaking out. There is one over there in Galilee. Wow. You got to get connected over there. His Wi-Fi, he got all the bars. Wow. My fault. He got Bible. He got an anointing. He got a response in the idea of how he worships. And he got scripture all up and down his life. <laughs> How's your bars? How's your Bible? How's your relationship? How's your anointing? 
wanting, and then how is the ideal of how you relate with God, and how is scripture flowing in your life? Tell me, neighbor, neighbor, how's your bars? How's your bars? You little low in one, you little high in one, you little small in one, you little over in one. Where you at with your bars? Where you at with your bars? Because it's your bars that tell me how close you are. And then if you ain't got no bars, you're out of range. Because you can't connect with nobody. Because you can be close and not be able to connect. That's right. Come on, you can be in church and still not. That's for I've seen people who phone die in the house. It got power, but it has no connections. Oh, man. Oh, man. I have myself on And you know what I found out? I'm just using these illustrations since we're in this phone thing, right? I went to the store, and the guy said, I said to him, I said, well, listen, how do you keep power going? Because I need to know how to maintain power. I'm using this illustration. He says, no problem, man. He says, is there a way? I said, I know about the plug. I don't want to hear about that. I don't know about the idea of a portable thing, because I realized that there's something on me that I can carry that can keep me power for myself. Yeah. And he said, you know what, we have this device. I said, what's the device? It's called a belt. I said, what does it do? He says, it's like a plate. It's a power pack. Yeah. I said, okay, well, what do I do then? He said, well, what you do is you just take it home. I said, I take it home and you know, I'm do what? He said, put it in a place. I said, well, in a place to do what? He says, as long as you are near the thing. He says, but if you come where near it and you put it in the right place, it will automatically empower itself. No good means. No okay. Woo. Okay. Oh, be ready for this one, man. Some of us want power, but we ain't in the right place. We wow. will we, we humble ourselves and lay down our own rights and our own power and our own strength. We won't surrender. We won't give up. Because I got to keep control of this. Because I, I, I want what I want. I want to do what I want to do. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to surrender my will. I'm not going to surrender my way. I'm not going to lay down my life. Because that might resolve the power. Lord, you don't Excuse me. You got power? You got power. Maybe you ain't got power if you ain't laid your life down in the right place. Maybe you laying your price down in a place that will take your power. Yeah, come on. That's good. Where you lay down, if you keep taking your power, you know you don't belong there. There should be signal enough for your life that you need to get out of it. And then turn around and get connected somewhere that you can put yourself that power with you no matter what you do. And even when you don't have strength, you can get to a place that will give you strength. That's called a church, my father, my father. And if you can get to the house of God, you'll get around the people of God, and you might get connected and you bring your life there. How you know, Pastor? Acts chapter 2 says it. And the day of Pentecost came and fully come because they was one accord. Watch this. One place. One place. They got power because they was in one place. Come on. One place And is that place providing power for your life? One accord, one place. These are something. A sound came from heaven, rushing on mighty wind. It filled the house where they were. They were sitting. 
Say, David. David. I'm, so glad I'm so glad you're in the right place today. Right place There's today. a bunch of power up in here today. There's a bunch of and if you surrender, and yield just like Christ, the power to live in the way God wants will show up. Come on, say amen. 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 Go to the next one for me, because watch this, say power, power. For, my purpose. for my purpose. And see, 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 what my blessing is, is that he tells in that process, and he helps me, because he says, Ananias says, goes by the way, he entered into the house and put his hands on Saul. He says, brother Saul, even the Lord Jesus appeared unto you in the way that he might send you, that you might receive sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Say, Nate. He made a connection. To somebody, somebody. In the right place. Right. And power came. Power came. Excuse me. I might, I might be that person sitting right next to you. See, I want you to realize that much as God don't need a power plant, He got power people. Yeah. Yeah. He got power people. If you, if you come in contact with the right person, strength will begin coming to your life. Anointing will begin coming to your life. The presence of God, the power of God, the promise of God, the will of God, the word of God will begin releasing to your life. Because in contact with the right person, then all of a sudden scales begin falling off. Why? Because when power shows up, anything that's not power has to leave. Yeah. 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 The scales are showing up, and he says, to receive the sight, and then you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then what I like this is, here's that power. Here's how you know it showed up. And remember, I say this is results, it's effects, it's a difference. Say a difference. Yeah. Yeah. This is how you know it was different from Paul. He says this, and Saul, my fault, he was Paul Paul. Mm -hmm. But he filled that. Amen. See, it's real interesting. You can tell when the power of God in somebody else's life, they change your name for you. Yes. Okay, let me do this one. So there was a time when I used to hang in Chester, right? Cats would say, Dog! Dog! If I do that a lot now, guess what they say? Pastor! What's up, Pastor? I ain't got to say nothing to them. I don't even have to say, what I'm messing me up the other day. I was going to my mom's house. I said, Pastor! Did he just call me? But he recognized the power. Yeah. He recognized what God's power has done. He recognizes the result of what God has done, the effects of what God has done, the shift of what God has worked. And then when he used to call me, I can't call you because now there's something different in your life. You have a level of power. Yeah. Well, many people that want to call you something can't even call you anymore. Yeah. He says, go ahead. He says, he says, the application, application. He says, here's the application of get your worship on and get your own power. So get your own power. So get your own power. Plug in with your prayer. Plug in with that. But then plug in with your worship. Say, plug in with my worship. I know I said praise earlier, but praise is a part of it, but your worship has to extend to it. Because here's where Paul takes it up to the next level. He's making melody in your heart for the Lord, but give thanks always. Say always. always. See, when you stop plugging in with your praise, you stop plugging in with what God can do. Yeah. Say, excuse me. He's going to give you five seconds to plug in right here. Doubt it, they'll 
you, you go in in the dark, you walk into the house and know, great, I'm gonna keep on walking. Mm -hmm. Why? I got faith that their power will be present when I need it. Wow. How is it that we got so much faith and people? Come on, that's right. Oh, but so we got faith in God that when I need the power I need, I can just click it, tap it, turn on, walk in, operate in. I got my own portable switch. I got my own power with me. Yes. And I got to have that level of confidence that it shows up, Malik, right when I need it. Yes. Right where I need it. Hallelujah. Shout out, I got power. I got power. If you're weak on some power, plug into your worship. Yes. That's right where you are. Plug in. Then he says, plug into the scriptures. Yeah. Say, get some word up in you. Yeah. One reason you ain't got no power, because if you, if you don't have no words, you can't have no power. Because the word is power. How you figure that passage? Because Jesus said it. Jesus said it this way, Matthew 22, 29. Jesus answered and said to them, you in error, because you don't know the scriptures, so then you don't even got no power for God. Uh, Come on. That's great. I know it was going to be quiet on that one. Yeah. Jesus told a bunch of Pharisees, he said, had y'all known the scriptures, right. you would have knew the power. Which means if I, I get to see the power if I know the scripture. Hallelujah, yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. Yeah. So if I ask you, how much is your how, how much is your account of your heart reading with the idea of what you have in store of scripture that can produce power when you need it? Yeah. What percentage would we ask? Look what he says. He goes on to say, they were astonished at his doctrine because his word was power. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he didn't say how you feel about the word. He says, whenever you speak the word, the word carries its own power. Yeah. Matter of fact, he puts it this way in Isaiah. His word can never return to him void. It has to accomplish what it's sent out to do and prosper the thing to where it's been sent. So when you send the word out of your mouth, you should be like, where, 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 where? By his stripes, I'm here. Now where? Now where did it go? Let's go. Let's go. Why? Because I believe in the power of the word. And if God can create the whole word with his words, yeah. what could you create with yours? Come on. Say power. Say, 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 you got power. You got power. You got too much power to be in this place. Go ahead, we'll finish this out. He says, say stop. He says, you got to be able to pray in the spirit. You got to be able to pray with others. Say pray for somebody else, by the way. Half of our problem sometimes is that we haven't tapped into a power that we got right next to us. Amen. We're two or three guys that just agree. I'm in the midst. Yeah. Watch this. Literally, man, what that means is I forfeit the presence of God because I won't agree with you. Wow. Uh -oh. Jesus. Come on. Come on. I ain't said it. Scripture said it. Where two or three guys that just agree. I'm there in the midst. Amen. And then I'll do whatever you ask me. So I forfeit deliverance and power simply because I can't agree with you. Wow. So good. Half the arguments in marriages is really about this issue. Because yeah. he knows if he gets y'all out of fellowship, then God don't have to show up. Yeah. We're going to about y'all. Yeah. We're just about disconnecting y'all. Yeah. 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 It says in Thessalonians 1 and 5, it says, For our gospel came not in word only, but in power, and in the Holy Ghost, yeah. and in much assurance that you would know the manner of men we were among you for your sake. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And they yeah. hope you find your power back. Oh, you your power back. And I hope you get connected. Yield yourself, submit yourself, humble yourself so yeah. that you can get the power that you need to be to walk this thing out in life the way that God wants you to. Can you give the Lord a praise right there? The say last thing. Last You're going to need power. You're going to need power. For your purpose. For your purpose. It's called function. You can be activated, you can even have application, but that don't mean you have function. What function does is cause you to do what you've been called to do, move in what you call to move in. And the way that he does it is even Jesus needed for himself. The Bible says this way, Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. I'm going to say the real song. How God, say God, God. Anointed. anointed you, you. in Newcastle. <laughs> God, God. Anointed. anointed you, you. and just yes. the anointing is the yoke destroying burden removing yes. power of God yes. it's the proof of the presence of God in your life it's the proof of the Holy Spirit in your world and in your life so anytime God wants to do it matter of fact the first thing he does is he wants to show it up in your life first say my life first what he says about Jesus he says he anointed him he didn't know him to lay hands guess what he laid him to do he anointed him to do good Ooh, that was, that was, I ain't, I ain't expect y'all to shout that out. 
The Bible says he didn't anoint Jesus just to be everything for everybody else. Yeah. He anointed Jesus so that Jesus would have a life that would look good. Yeah. And he would be doing good and then you would see the anointing in his life as he walked it out. Yeah. So when you go help somebody that need help, you don't ask another back. They get to see God at work in their life. Yes. Come on. And you show your anointing just because you did good. Amen. Yes. Can I ask you how anointed you are? <laughs> see, I know you want to sack somebody anointing. And I know you want you know, the little preacher anointing. But there's an anointing that just makes you do good. He gives us power to function. He didn't, he didn't just give him power to be able to do the vision and do the kingdom. He gave him power to be the person and function and do good when he saw something good to do. And watch this. He didn't just do it. He was anointed at doing it. They said, make wine? I don't even want to make wine. But when I make it, it's going to be the best wine on the planet. Because if you ask me to do it, I'm going to do it with my anointing. And my anointing is so strong that it's in me, but that was on me to be the function. Shout neighbor. It's time to function. With your anointing. You have an anointing in you that, 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 that is given to you. John, first verse, John says in 2 and 27, you, you have an anointing. And it's the same anointing that Jesus has. So when are we going to see what you saw in Jesus in us? See, they're not looking for us. They're looking for the sons of, sons of God in the manifestation in the earth. The whole the world is waiting and trembling. But when are we going to see another Jesus? As soon as we see the anointing, somebody that can do good. And as soon as he said, and watch this, he says to him, he says, do good, and then healing all that was oppressed. Say, name, real anointing, real anointing. will change conditions. So if you come to church and broke, we'll try to get you to get some finance together for your life. All right, two people didn't even say amen. Amen. So that anointing was messed up. Because see, right. sometimes you can be oppressed and financial. Yes. And yes. so oppressed that you don't want to ever budget. Amen. I didn't cuss. I said budget. I said budget. I said budget. Because no matter how much comes in, it will all go out if you don't budget. And you spend your life having a five, six-figure income, but living in a two-figure mindset. You think that you got oppressed. Because if you got to spend everything you get, you are oppressed. The only problem is we are pressing ourselves. Go ahead, Pastor Dave. Get away from me. All right. Say your neighbor. Change something. Change. that anointing you got. He anointed you to change something in your family. Somewhere in your family, they've been looking for you. But they ain't looking for the same you. They're looking for the one that's anointed. They're looking for the one doing good. They're looking for the one that's changing situations and programs and systems around it. That somehow you don't act like us and look like us. And you are functioning in a double level, level, level than us. And we can't figure it out. But what it is is the Holy Ghost is now in your life. And now you got power to do something. You didn't have power to do no more. I got it. I got it. I got my Holy Ghost. How y'all say married 27 years, 28 years? I got power to be married. I got power. I got anointing to be married. I got anointing to be a father. I got to be anointed to be this man that I am. It ain't me. I know it's the function that he's given me because his anointing is all do this. Yes, 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 Jesus. Shout, you got one too. Yes, Shout it like I said. You got one too. Yes, that was better. That was better. Oh, you change yes. conditions. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because it's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. It's interesting. And it? He said, I want you to preach to help people come out of financial traps. Yes. That's what Jesus said. He says, then he says, gospel to the poor. He said, the broken heart. He wants me to change relationships. Kind of like last night, it was in this place. Yes. Yes. Shift the broken heart. Yes. Preach deliverance to the cat. Yes. People that are meant to be trapped in their minds as a thought process. Yes. They're very sight to the blind. Come to church, you're blind, you get a vision, you come. Yes. I can have better, I can do better, I can go for it, I can be somebody, I can live like this, I can walk like God will have me to walk. Yes. He said, he set the liberty, I can't, he set the liberty, set the liberty, them that are bruised. That are those who have been damaged and hurt and wounded emotionally. Can get over what happened to their emotionally. Walk out spiritually. Yes. Somebody say amen. Say, come on. Come on. Get your anointed self. Say, neighbor. neighbor. How much power you got? This next one. That's what it is. This will prove to you that you have the anointing. The Bible says, but the anointing that you have, yes. you have received of him yes. who abides in you. Him who? The Holy Spirit. Yes. He's already in you. He's abiding in you, 
and you have a yoke destroying, burden lifting anointing in your life. Yes. That's why other people's living, so not yours. Amen. That's why you keep thinking something that other people don't think. Because the anointing is breaking the yoke and grooving the burden off of your life. He says, it abides in you that you need not need my teach you. That same anointing teaches you all things that is the truth and not lie. Even as it is taught you, you abide in him. Now, I want you to see this power. Say, how much power? How much power? Ephesians says this way, 3 and 20. He says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ever ask or think. We know we stop there, but the verse doesn't stop there. The verse says, according to the power that works in you. Amen. 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 How much power do you have? We want God to do everything. He said, all I ask you to do is to think it, and I'll go above it, but I won't do it without you. Amen. Moses delivered the Israelites, but I ain't going down without you. David, go destroy the Philistines, but I won't do it without you. I could do it. I could do exceedingly and abundantly. But I need your power to help me work what I want to do with your work. Sometimes we want God to show up in a place we want. Wow. Then we want to see him do exceedingly. He says, no, I partner with you. I'm a co-worker. I'm a co-labor. Somebody say amen. He says this. He says, now the God of all will fill you with all joy and believe me that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Say name. Amen. I hope you got something today. I hope you got something today. I'm going to close with this. Just in case you don't know. I almost forgot the basic one. I left the basic one for sure because I realized it's really important. I found out this. Is that this don't work unless it's connected to something. Uh, it won't work if it's big. Come on. So sometimes pressures in our life will hit us so bad we can't connect with folk, we won't connect with a church, we won't connect with destiny, we won't connect with anybody because our life has been bent. And that's what's hindering the power in our life. Come on. Other side of this is this always connects to a structure. It always connects to an order. In other words, it always connects to either a house or a building. So you got to be willing to connect with something that has order. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. If you want power, Hallelujah. you can't get it by yourself in the level you may want it unless you connect with something with power so that it can give its power and make its power available to you. Yes. Every, every resource needs a source. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got to connect. And you might be here today, and you don't realize it, but you might be disconnected. Uh -huh. What I found out is it cannot connect if it's out of a line. Uh -huh. If I haven't submitted myself to the right order and honor and place and put myself in the place where it will function right, yes. I can't see the power that's available for my life. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Wow. Thank you. To your neighbor. Neighbor. Come on now.